curious of Chris being out and you know as you talked about yesterday embracing the whole moment of it but um, how are you guys uh, going to adapt without him being out there? I mean only time can tell. You know, we're obviously game planning for it now. But you know you can't can't replace what, what Chris brings to the team. Uh, he'll still be there being a leader, being vocal, but you know the things he does on the court we'll just have to find other ways to just be effective, uh, make sure everybody's involved. Trying to do some of the Chris Paul stuff. Curious, because obviously with you being able to be more of a playmaker this year, we know Kevin's a playmaker. Is this about as prepared as you could be to lose a guy like Chris, knowing that you two are, are capable and, and do that as well? Yeah, I mean it puts more on, you know, all of our plates. Um, but you know that's that's part of playoff basketball. That's part of the NBA is just you know control what you can control. You know we all wish injuries weren't a part of it, but you know it is. And, you know, the teams that can sustain that and adapt um, under those circumstances kind of tend to do better. How do you guys kind of approach the extra gap in between two and three? Because I know after a loss, you guys are normally ready to get back out there, but yeah. for preparation and rest. And... Um, I mean, just keep it high level. You know, even if you're not on the court um, doing anything with your body, just, you know, your mental awareness, your sharpness still be there. And, you know, just mentally put yourself in those situations that we seen last game. Rewatch the last game, see what worked and what didn't. Devin, this might be difficult to answer, but with what you said to the group before Monty came in and those moments that come for you after a loss like that, what are what are you thinking in those moments in terms of when to step up and, and when something needs to be said? Um, you know, it's just a feel. You know, it's part of leadership, just trying to be effective and you know what you say and you know, approach different people different ways. You know, I've had a lot of different teammates, a lot of different coaches, so, you know, I've seen, you know, what works and what doesn't, and, you know, I think we have a group that everybody believes in us still, and, you know, we just take it from there. Who do you think of the most when you think of what works? Um, I don't want to give, give that away. <laughs> <laughs> But were you, when you were at UK, were you involved in uh, Jamal Murray's official visit? Were you a host friend for him? Right? I was not, but you know, with Tyler Ewis being one of my, you know, best friends and dearest friends, they were teammates that next year, and you know, I followed them a lot, um, and still do. And after that, it was De'Aaron. So you know, it's always been good, good, great guards to come through there, and you know, I've watched the games closely. Do you have a pretty good relationship with Jamal, just built over the years? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's competitive. You know, it's high respect for each other. Um, you know, I miss him being out on the court, you know, him missing a lot of time and, you know, seeing him back healthy and, you know, being able to compete at a higher level and that's fun. When you watched the film back, did you like the way that you guys forced them to play in rotation off the extra attention you and Kevin were getting? Yeah, you know, that's a lot of it. When they're playing their aggressive defenses, um, they switched it up a little bit and put Jokic on, you know, some of the guards, Josh, and, you know, they had a few adjustments throughout the game that, you know, I think we're pretty effective that, you know, we just have to come back and have a game plan for it. What have you learned to counter uh, against their two men in between Jamal and, and Nicole? You said, what have we what? What have you learned how to counter and defend against that two men game between Jamal and Nicole? I mean, that's that's their go-to. You know, they've closed out a lot of the games in their careers, you know, playing that, playing that two man game. It's just, you know, there's no way to really just stop it. You just have to make it hard. Um, I think last game we did a good job of that on Jamal, um, not so much Jokic, so just finding a balance of just making every possession hard. I mean, great scorers and great players are going to make plays. Um, just making sure they have to use some effort to do it. Have you uh, put in a word with Kevin about getting in college? Oh, next? yeah, man. He'd even, I talk about it every day. He'd even bring it up to me. I hit him this morning like, come on, bro. You weren't even going to let me know. I need a code or something. Um, that's exciting, man. I'm excited for May 10th. You had the tag in the gulag, and you thought you had I thought certified I did yourself so. a bit. No, nah, once they did the Messi and Pogba, like, I knew they maybe could do it, and it's, yeah, it's a dream of mine. Maybe you're next. Maybe you put yeah, on the word. I'm jealous. Yeah, I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous right now. Thanks, Book. Thanks, right, Book. Thanks, Book.